Welcome to Ask an Atheist, a weekly educational call-in program focusing on issues of atheism, skeptical inquiry, and the separation of church and state. We air live from SCAN Studios in Seattle every Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, and we're archived online at www.askanatheist.tv. Uh, my name is Casey Dorn, and voted the most popular co-host ever, Libby, Mas Libby Mastretta. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Nice I'm, to be back. We're really glad you're back because all of the, uh, the hapless horn dog <laughs> viewers, you are, you are the one people that person that wanted to come back the most. Uh, I'm flattered in a strange sort of way. <laughs> yeah, I had a work conflict, a work schedule conflict, but I should be able to be back in the regular host rotation from now on and right. looking forward to continuing my participation sure. with the show. So. Yeah, well, we were really thinking that you might have joined some kind of crazy cult or something, so we're glad you're back. It is a possibility. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we are going to we're, we've sw switched up our show a little bit. So I think we're going to dispense with any kind of announcements because actually I don't think very much is going on, uh, except for Ram after the show, and we'll tell you about that later if you want to come down and talk to us. So uh, I think we should just do a call out just to make sure if you're an atheist, agnostic, or free thought group in the Puget Sound area, um, and you want to get mentioned on this show, uh, please go to www.askanatheist.tv, and maybe we can get that up on the screen there. Um, and you guys can tell us what you're doing, tell us, uh, we might pimp you out on our show, and try to get us, all of us atheists and the like, together. Um, so we be, like that, togetherness. Yes, yeah, well, there's not, there's near, not nearly enough of that. So the, uh, I guess we can lead straight into news stories, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I have, uh, these are actually, both of my news stories come from a, uh, Hemant Mehta's blog, The Friendly Atheist, right. which is a pretty great blog. If you've never if you've never checked it out, you should. I think it's just friendlyatheist.com. Yeah, I, I, I think right? so. Or, um, yeah. Anyway, pretty pretty good stories here. Um, he commented on uh, the existence of a business called Eternal Earthbound Pets USA, and this is basically an, an atheist set up this service, I suppose you could call it. Um, and the website says that uh, they match responsible atheists with Christians concerned about the pets they will be leaving behind during the rapture. And now initially, this was uh, a free service. You could just go onto the website if you were a concerned Christian right. worrying about Fluffy or like, sure. uh, if I were a Christian, I might want to find someone to take care of my guinea pigs, Carl Sagan and Ankh Shashank. <laughs> They're real names. Um, initially, it was just like this volunteer thing. It was right. maybe kind of silly a little bit to right. uh, make people question their belief in the rapture, but now sure. this guy has actually started charging $110 for anybody who wants to have an atheist promise to take care of your pets. And um, apparently they have a, a, at least 200 contracts That's awesome. as of today. So they're making some money off of this, and uh, Hamont Meta raises the question, is this ethical? Is right. it really okay? Because, I mean, this guy, this dude who runs the website, uh, the Earth Eternal Earthbound Pets USA, he doesn't believe the rapture is going to happen, clearly. So is this ethical? Is it just like psychics and tarot card readers who know they're trotting out a bunch of BS but taking people's money anyway to right. kind of give them what they want to hear? Right. I don't, it seems to me like UFO insurance, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like when I heard, heard about that in the X-Files time, I was like, wow, those people are really know how to scam someone, you Old know? Liberty robot insurance? <laughs> <laughs> because robots are strong and they're more powerful than you. <laughs> and they eat old people's pills. Right. Anyway, <laughs> you've got a story too. Yeah, though. actually, uh, um, b uh, bald man to my beard face, uh, Paul Case, <laughs> brought this uh, story to me. And I think I'd read this, but I hadn't read the second part. So, Christian woman stops robbery with faith. It's a great, it's a great uh, headline. Held at gunpoint, a store clerk invoked her faith to turn a desperate thief into a rep repentant gunman. So it's a woman who owns a uh, cell phone store in Miami, I believe. The man entered the store and made small talk about the rainy weather, and then he asked to see a phone, and then he showed uh, the, cl the clerk a gun and nervously asked for the money in the register. I really hate to do this, the gunman told her. Uh, I'm not, she said. I'm just going to, oh, she's not afraid. I'm just going to have to talk to you about the Jesus that I have. Uh, and then the robber said in return, may God bless you for that. Just know in my mind that I absolutely hate doing this. I'm embarrassed that I have to do this and I have no choice. So apparently he needed rent money or something and he did this. So she ends up talking him down from the ledge, and these are, I think these are quotes here. I'm not sure if, how they got this, but the story got this. But she says, Jesus helps you. He can change your life. Go back to church. Find a job. Get real friends in church. Talk to a pastor. You need to do this. Jesus is coming soon. And the story says, completely defeated, the man revealed that his weapon was only a BB gun. Uh, so basically, then he left the store, and that was it. And there have been a lot of Christian websites that are saying, oh, this is the power of, you know, this is the, what the power of... of uh, 
of believing in Jesus and what happens if we're all Christians. Well, a story just came out this weekend that was a follow-up to this. Cops say repentant would-be robber hits shoe store. Investigators have caught up with the repentant would-be thief who was caught on tape as a manager of a cell phone store talked him out of robbing her. Broward Sheriff's deputies identified the man uh, as Israel Camacho, 37, apologized profusely and then left empty-handed, but later strolled into a Payless shoe store a few miles away and robbed it at gunpoint. On his way out the door last Friday, he said to his victims, God bless you. So... I hear something. I believe it was a blast on the irony of Vuvuzela. <laughs> This is it's fantastic. I, I, don't, I don't even feel like I need to say anything about yeah, this. It's just so beautiful. It kind of stands on its own. Yeah. Um, another great story, also again from the Friendly Atheist blog. Uh, this one kind of blew my mind a little bit. It's uh, in Christchurch, New Zealand. There's a food bank called the 0800 Hungry Food Bank. Um, they were running out of people to help them deliver their food to needy, needy uh, New Zealanders. And the food bank manager, Carrie Bensimon, said that uh, many of the 120 orders could not be delivered uh, because they ran short on staff. There mm. were not enough volunteers to help them do this. Um, some atheists volunteered to help out, and they were turned away. They were not allowed to help out with delivering food to needy people. Uh, Bensimon, Incredible. a former truck driver, said that while the warehouse had adequate staff, the charity's policy was that parcels could be delivered only by members of a church. He said he had turned <laughs> down help from non-religious people. And then he says, I know it sounds really, really stupid, but you've got to understand how we're set up. <laughs> he said the aim was to increase church involvement and having food delivered by non-religious volunteers would defeat the purpose. Oh. So the purpose evidently was not... Yeah, the purpose WTF evidently, our, our floor director just held up a big sign that says <laughs> WTF, and that's kind of what's going through my head, too. I mean, oh. the purpose isn't to feed hungry people. Right. It's just to get your church dudes to come out and put in a little more effort. You know, we talked about this when I was on the show with Mike. It's the same thing with the Catholic Church withdrawing their support of DC services yeah. because they voted on the gay marriage thing. It's yeah. like they're, show they're tipping their hand, and they're showing that the it's not to do good works. It's just to further themselves, and the right. good works are secondary. Right. So if something threatens their reputation, that's crazy. Unfortunate, but true. Uh, and then the last one that I have, um, actually, can we get the phone number up there, guys? Just Because um, we're talking about lots of stuff. We're making fun of certain people's faiths and certain interpretations of such. So the phone number's here. I'm going to do the... Do the thing. Hey. That's 206-421-5658. Right okay. Uh, the last bit of news, and this will segue into your topic yes. today, is uh, this week, Clackamas County Sheriff in Oregon um, uh, obtained photographs of an eight-month-old that uh, showing a fast-growing mass of blood vessels that may cause blindness over her left eye. Oh, did I, did I miss the beginning of the story? No. No, I don't think so. Um, so basically, a couple from the Followers Church of Christ, Followers of Christ Church in Oregon City, stand accused of criminal mis mistreatment for deliberately withholding medical care from their child. Their infant daughter, Elena, has a serious eye problem. And uh, Booth, we can get the, the uh, image up here because I think this is going to tell, the image is going to tell more. And yeah, it's that's heartbreaking. Really sad. It's shocking. Their infant daughter has a serious eye pro problem, which they chose not to treat. Someone notified authorities that the state intervened, and now the Wylands are trying to regain custody of their daughter. So left untreated, the mast pushed Elena's eye down and out placing profound pressure on her eye so eyeball and eye socket. It's not clear whether she'll go b blind or recover. The only thing is certain is that the Wylands deliberately withheld medical care and admitted to the court for doing so. So this is sickening when you actually see the, the photo and you realize that these people, you could look at your own child and see, how, how, see what's going wrong and not think to take her to the hospital. But uh, the, the story goes on and says, over the past three decades, more than 20 Oregon children whose parents belong to the followers of, of Christ Church have died of treatable illnesses, according to the medical examiner's office. Yet Oregon grants special leniency for two faith healing parents, singling them out favorably in state policy and protecting them from being charged with certain crimes. So um, it, the, it later goes on to say that um, the, or, the Oregon's trying to actually repeal, re, repeal this and to make it uh, tougher on them. But I mean, this basically does show you the worst possible outcome of what happens when, uh, uh, what happens when basically you let your your faith override good common sense. Right. You and I were discussing this a few days ago, this story, and, and we both kind of agreed that the only potential way somebody could get to the point where they would look at their child who had this problem and wouldn't go and seek medical treatment right. for it as soon as possible is if they had been so right. damaged at a young age that right. this kind of belief and this kind of weird, messed up 
faith right. was ingrained in their mentality. It's truly shocking. It's and, and I think yeah, I mean it's it's that it's that uh, the part where uh, the Steven Weinberg has this quote, who's the the physicist, who said, "Good people will do good things. Bad people will do bad bad things. But to get good people to do bad things requires religion." And I think that. I think I think anyone objectively who's looking at that is going to say this is tragic, and they should take her to the hospital right away. Mm -hmm. There should be no delay in taking her to the hospital. But these, you know, um, yeah, I I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's well, anyway, I, I'm at a loss for words. It, yeah, it, it's pretty shocking, and and it, I do think it, you know, the, the parents of this child um, had to have suffered in some way in order to get to the point where they could ever do this. And, right. And which does bring us to our topic, which is childhood indoctrination. Right. Um, that's what we're talking about today. And before we launch into our discussion of this, um, I think we need to, to define specifically what indoctrination is. So I'm going to give you the definition of that, and then we're going to jump to a call, and okay. then we'll go ahead and come back to our topic. So the definition we're working with today specifically of indoctrination is to imbue with a partisan or ideological point of view, to imbue. Keep that in mind. And uh, we're going to go to a call here. We've got Frank in Seattle. Frank, can you hear me? Go ahead. Frank? For you, it's a bit off topic, but I think it's, it's pertinent. Um, I've been watching your show for some time now, and, and I realize that, uh, that atheists don't ridicule uh, Luciferian or Satanic groups as ardently as they do Christians. And I was just wondering why that was. Um, good question. I, I'll tell you, I sure do. <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, we, we have a little bit of an echo, and I apologize. We have a strange kind of sound glitch we've been trying to deal with today, um, so I apologize for that right off the bat. Right. Um, I certainly do. I think the reason why you hear Christianity mentioned more than other kinds of religious belief is because there is a majority of Christians in our country. We have, um, you know, other religions and non-belief are, are not as popular, they're, they're, you don't have as strong a head count. So yeah. we have so many Christians out there in the United States um, that are interfering with other people's rights and freedoms that it, it kind of comes more naturally. It's just more to, written about them. Yeah, then there's more right. written about them. It's, it's a larger part of our culture overall, but I absolutely, I mean, I will, I will throw down with a Christian or a Satanist or or whoever, whoever wants to discuss, right. I, I will gladly talk to any of them. I, and I personally think that there is not that big of a substantial difference between Satanists and Christians because they both have to believe in the same uh, worldview. I mean, well, the worldview might be slightly different, but they still believe in the same supernatural stuff. They still, ex they still accept that there are supernatural powers and that, they, that these deities exist. So in my mind, because they are all under the umbrella of, of beliefs without evidence, they run into just the same categories. But the answer to your question, Frank, is because no one talks about the Satanists, because I'm sure there are so few of them that they actually don't, you know, this doesn't, doesn't come into the discourse. I see. Do you have well, anything else? Anyway, just a suggestion that uh, maybe you can consider them fair game in the future. Oh, we absolutely do, and I'm sure <laughs> yeah. if, if we end up yeah. with some, some interesting news articles on people of other beliefs, we will absolutely discuss those too. Um, we, don't, right. we don't mean to single out Christians only, it's just that that tends to be what, what comes up in the news more often. Hey Frank, can I ask you a question? Sure. What is it that you believe? Oh, I consider myself a Christian. Okay. Okay, and, and, why, and why do you believe that? Oh, uh, well, what? it's just my preference. I mean, I read the Gospels and it appeals to me. Okay, well, okay. that's good enough. Frank, we appreciate yeah. your call. Thank you so much. Okay. Have that's a good day. Good. Thanks. Okay, yeah. so... That was cool. Yeah. No, I wasn't going to start, you know, trying to tear him apart or whatever. Right, right. But he had a, he had a good point. I mean, yeah, that's, he did have a good point. Someone could call us and say, why don't we, t you know, why don't we talk more smack about Zoroastrians? Well, you know sure. what? They don't do as crazy stuff that gets in the news. <laughs> you yeah, know? that's kind of true. That's just the way it is.